Welcome back, everybody. Now we're going to talk about dependency. In this lesson, we will learn what dependency is, go over the different types of dependence, and finish with some practice determining dependency. So why do we care about dependency? Well, dependency is important for establishing whether a client will qualify for a few different tax benefits. Dependency is most directly involved with the child tax credit, credit for other dependents, and dependent care credit. Dependency is closely related to the earned income credit as well. As we discussed in the last section, dependency can also be an important consideration for determining if someone qualifies to file as head of household or less commonly as a qualifying surviving spouse. There are two types of dependents, qualifying child and qualifying relative. We'll discuss the differences between them soon. Clients will list potential dependents on the intake form on the bottom of page one. Clients are instructed to list everyone who lived with them and anyone else they supported financially. They may not necessarily be the taxpayer's dependents. Using the information they provide, along with the additional questions you will ask them, use your 4012 to determine who they will claim as a dependent. Dependency is important for determining eligibility for a variety of different credits, as well as the head of household filing status. If the taxpayer is someone else's dependent, they cannot claim themselves, and they can't claim any dependents of their own. So you want to be cautious with college students and make sure they are not a dependent of their parents before claiming themselves on their tax return. A taxpayer claimed as a dependent may still file a return to receive refund of withholdings, or in some cases, they might have a balance too. There are two types of dependents, qualifying child and qualifying relative. Let's start with the rules that apply to both. There are three tests that must be met for all dependents. The dependent taxpayer test. A taxpayer who can be claimed as a dependent by someone else cannot claim anyone as a dependent on his or her tax return. Part one of the intake and interview sheet asks, can anyone claim you or your spouse on their tax return? If the answer is yes, they cannot claim a dependent. Use your interview skills, because some taxpayers, particularly students, may not understand how to answer this question correctly. The joint return test. Generally, a married person who files a joint return cannot be claimed as a dependent. The exception is if the joint return is filed strictly to claim a refund, and there would be absolutely no tax liability for either spouse on separate returns. This is very rare. The citizen slash resident test. To be claimed as a dependent, a person must be a U.S. citizen, a U.S. resident alien, U.S. national, or a resident of Canada or Mexico. There are four tests that must be met to claim a dependent as a qualifying child, relationship, residency, age, and support. Relationship. To meet this test, the child must be the taxpayer's son, daughter, stepchild, foster child, or a descendant of any of them, for example, a grandchild, or the taxpayer's sibling, including half-siblings or step-siblings, or a descendant of any of them, like a niece or a nephew. For these relationship tests, an adopted child is treated the same as a natural child residency. To meet this test, the child must have lived with the taxpayer for more than half the year. The child is considered to have lived with the taxpayer during periods of time when either the child or the taxpayer is temporarily absent due to illness, education, business, vacation, or military service. Age. To meet this test, the child must be under age 19 meaning 18 and younger at the time of the tax year and also younger than the taxpayer or a full-time student under the age of 24, meaning 23 and younger 
at the time of the year or at the end of the year and younger than the taxpayer or they can be any age if permanently and totally disabled. Support. To meet this test, the child cannot have provided more than half of their own support during the tax year. This question usually gets a laugh from most parents. This means that the child cannot have provided more than half the funds spent towards their basic living expenses. This would not prevent a child who happens to have a lot of income from being claimed so long as they do not spend their own money on their basic living expenses like food and shelter. Having a qualifying child on your tax return is generally more beneficial than a qualifying relative due to credits like the child tax credit and earned income credit. One more thing to know about qualifying children. If two taxpayers have the same qualifying child, only one taxpayer can claim the tax benefits for that particular qualifying child. If two taxpayers who could claim a qualifying child cannot agree, you would need to apply the tiebreaker rules. These are the rules that the IRS will use to resolve a dispute if two people file claiming the same qualifying child. You can find the chart in your 4012. There are also four tests that must be met in order to claim a dependent as a qualifying relative. Qualifying child test, member of household or relationship, gross income, and support. Not a qualifying child. A child isn't your qualifying relative if the child is your qualifying child or the qualifying child of another taxpayer member of household or relationship. To meet this test, a person must either live with you all year as a member of your household or be related to you in one of the ways listed under relatives who do not have to live with you. If at any time during the year the person was your spouse, that person cannot be your qualifying relative. Gross income. To meet this test, a person's gross income for the year must be less than the threshold set by the IRS and adjusted each year for inflation. Support. To meet this test, you must provide more than half of the child's total support during the calendar year. Notice the distinction here between the support test for qualifying child and the support test for qualifying relative. For a qualifying child, the child cannot have provided more than half of their own support, but the person claiming that child, usually the custodial parent, may or may not be the person who provides most of their financial support. But for a qualifying relative, you must provide more than half of their financial support in order to claim them as a dependent. Remember Megan from our discussion of filing status? You determined that her daughter Francesca was a qualifying person and that Megan could file head of household. We will now determine if she can claim Francesca as a dependent. Notice that the top of this chart says to begin with this table for both qualifying child and qualifying relative. Megan and her daughter Francesca, age eight, lived in the same household for more than half the year. Megan pays for all of Francesca's expenses. They are both U.S. citizens. Let's start with step one. Can you be claimed as a dependent on someone else's tax return? Megan supports her own household financially, so she's not going to be claimed as a dependent by someone else. The answer is no. We move on to step two. Was the person married as of December 31st of the tax year? Francesca is not married. She's eight years old. So we move on to step four. Was the person a U.S. citizen? The answer is yes, so we move to step five. And was the person your son, daughter, or one of those other relationships listed there? This is the relationship test. Francesca is Megan's daughter. The answer is yes, so we move on to step six. Was the person under age 19 at the end of the year and younger than you? 
or a full-time student under age 24? Francesca is eight years old. The answer is yes, so we can move on to step seven. Did the person live with you as a member of your household, except for temporary absences, for more than half the year? Francesca did live with Megan for the entire year, so the answer is yes, and we can move on to step eight. Did the person provide more than half of his or her own support for the year? Megan paid all the expenses, so the answer is no. We can move on to step nine. Is the person a qualifying child of any other person? That's not going to be the case here. So Megan is going to be able to claim Francesca as her dependent. Okay, so we know that Megan can claim Francesca as a dependent. Now let's check one more time if she's going to be a qualifying child or a qualifying relative. Looking at the chart, what do you think? Let's go through the test. Note, once a dependent qualifies as your qualifying child, they cannot be your qualifying relative. So let's look at the test for qualifying child. The child's got to be your son, your daughter, your brother, your sister, or a descendant of any of them. So we're good there. The child must be under age 19 at the end of the year and younger than you, or under 24 and away at school. Get another check there. The child must have lived with you for more than half the year. Check. The child must not have provided more than half of his or her own support for the year. Another check. The child is not filing a joint return, check. And if the child is going to be a qualifying child of more than one person, you'll need to apply the tiebreaker rules. That's not going to apply in this case. So we have a winner here, folks. Looks like Francesca has herself a qualifying child. Did you get it right? Speaking of qualifying children, Relationships that are established by marriage are not ended by death or divorce. If Mr. and Mrs. Brady were to divorce, they could still claim each other's children as qualifying children, as long as all other tests are met. Let's do some practice. We're going to look at Trevor and John. They both had successful TV careers until John was let go from his job and moved in with Trevor. Can Trevor claim John as a qualifying relative? Here are the facts. They are not related. John lived with Trevor for the entire tax year. John has no taxable income and is 53 years old. And we're going to assume that the dependent taxpayer, joint return, and citizen slash resident tests have been met. Since John is over the age limit for qualifying child and also, well, not a child and not disabled, we're going to move on to the qualifying relative tests. We will use Table 2 to determine if John is Trevor's qualifying relative. Starting with Step 1, is John Trevor's qualifying child or the qualifying child of another? The answer is no. Go to Step 2. Step 2, was John a family relation or relative of Trevor? The answer to that question is no. Go to step three. Step three, did John live with Trevor all year as a member of his household? The answer to that question is yes. We go to step four. Step four, did John have gross income less than the IRS's threshold? The answer to that question is yes. On to step five. Step five, did Trevor provide more than half of John's total support for the calendar year? The answer to that question is yes. So is John considered Trevor's qualifying relative? Yes, Trevor can claim John as a qualifying relative. Did you get that one correct? Back to Vanessa. We already determined that her filing status is single, but how many dependents is Vanessa entitled to claim? Let's review her facts. Her friend Christina and Christina's daughter Samantha have lived with her for a year and a half, and no one else lived in the home with them. We know that neither Christina nor Samantha received income of any kind last year, and Vanessa paid all the expenses for all of them, and Vanessa and Christina are not related to each other. Let's start with Christina. 
Since she is over age 24, not totally and permanently disabled, and not related to Vanessa, she can't be a qualifying child. So we'll skip Table 1 and start with the test for qualifying relative on Table 2. Let's work through the chart. We will use Table 2 to determine if Christina can be considered Vanessa's qualifying relative. Starting with Step 1, is Christina Vanessa's qualifying child or the qualifying child of another? The answer is no. Go to Step 2. Step 2, was Christina a member of Vanessa's family or a relative? The answer is no. Go to Step 3. Step three, did Christina live with Vanessa all year as a member of her household? The answer is yes. We go to step four. Step four, did Christina have gross income less than the IRS threshold? The answer to that is yes. On to step five. Step five, did Vanessa provide more than half of Christina's total support for the calendar year? Yes. So Vanessa can claim an exemption for Christina as a qualifying relative. Easy, huh? When you follow your 2012. Now let's look at Samantha. For her, we're going to start with table one. Can you or your spouse be claimed as a dependent on someone else's tax return? The answer is no, so we can move to step two. Was the person married as of December 31st? Samantha was not married. We move to step four. Was the person a U.S. citizen? That answer is yes, so we can move to step five. Was the person related to you? The answer to that is no. So Samantha is not going to be a qualifying child. Looking at table two, can Vanessa claim Samantha as a qualifying relative? Let's go back to the chart for Samantha. We will use table two to determine if Samantha is Vanessa's qualifying relative. Starting with step one, is Samantha Vanessa's qualifying child or the qualifying child of another? The answer is no. Go to step two. Step two, was Samantha a family relation or relative of Vanessa's? The answer is no. On to step three. Step three, did Samantha live with Vanessa all year as a member of her household? The answer is yes. We go to step four. Step four, did Samantha have gross income less than the IRS's threshold? The answer is yes. On to step five. Step five, did Vanessa provide more than half of Samantha's total support for the calendar year? The answer is yes. So is Samantha considered Vanessa's qualifying relative? Yes. Vanessa can claim Samantha as a qualifying relative despite the fact that they are not related. How did you do on this scenario? Get any easier as you practice and consult your 4012, huh? To summarize this lesson, remember, there are two types of dependents, qualifying child and qualifying relative. If someone is a qualifying child, they can't be a qualifying relative. And a qualifying relative isn't always a relative. That wraps up dependency. In the next lesson, we'll cover income.